Hi, my name is Mark Harris. I'm one of the worship pastors here at Gateway Church. And I've also been a published songwriter for 30 years. So today I want to talk to you for just a moment about songwriting, the subject of songwriting. And I think where we have to begin is why do we need more songs? With all of the great hymns that have been written over the past hundreds of years, and even with the great modern worship songs that we've had written over the past 40 to 50 years, why do we need more songs? And I think the best place to look would be in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31. It's where God says to Moses, write down this song for yourselves and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. That sounds a little harsh, but basically what God is saying is, I want the children of Israel to be reminded as they grow up that I'm a faithful God, that I'm a powerful God to be reminded of all the great things that I've done so so that they don't forget the history of what I've brought them through. But they needed a now word to remind them. God gives us songs now so that we can document what He's doing today. I think during the season that we're going through, it's a great time for God to give songwriters all over the world new words to put into the mouth of His children to declare back to Him. Martin Luther said this. He said that he put the church's theology to music so that the people would know and remember what they believe. Isn't that great? A melody helps us remember and retain a lyric or a truth. Melodies are what we remember when we walk away from singing a song. Andrew Fletcher, a Scottish political activist, said, Let me write the songs for a nation. I don't care who writes its laws. Basically what he was saying is, whoever writes the songs basically writes the history of that place. I think it's, it's a sobering thought, but it lets us know as songwriters, when we write a song with a beautiful melody that people remember, we are held accountable for what the words would be that we put into their mouths. And I think every good song begins with listening. I love this statement. Everything in writing begins with language. Language begins with listening. So my first point is, I have five points. They're going to rhyme uh, just as a a songwriter would do. They're not all perfect rhymes, but they're going to rhyme to help you remember these points. The first point is to listen to know. You have to listen to know what to write about. All of the great songwriters that I've met through the years are great listeners. There's an old saying that says, God gave us two ears and one mouth, and that's because he wants us to listen twice as much as we talk. I think that applies very well to songwriters. Um, I've been to Israel and I've seen where the psalmist David, they say that he probably wrote most of the psalms, and that was at at En Gedi. And in the caves of En Gedi, when he was hiding away from Saul, he would put uh, pen to paper and he would write uh, whatever God was speaking into his heart. And I think he was desperate to hear from God. And that's where so many of the great psalms came from. And then next, I think about Moses. Moses was the very first recorded songwriter in the Bible. And the very first song is in Exodus 15. And and so before that song was documented, it's called the Red Sea Song. It's in chapter 15 of Exodus. In, In chapter 7 through 14, those first eight chapters, it says that In in, in every one of those chapters, in the very first verse of those chapters, it says, then God spoke to Moses. What that means is Moses had been listening for a long time to God before he wrote the Red Sea song. So if if you're going to write a great song, you have to listen to know what to write about. And I would give you just a key tip. I always try to have something with me so that I can document Uh, a word that God gives me, or just a simple melody. Many times I'll wake up at 3.30 in the morning, which I don't love to do, but it's just sometimes when I wake up, I hear a melody running through my head, and it's, it's a nugget that God gives me that later can turn into a song. And it may just be one little line of a melody that is the anchor that becomes a song. And so I would encourage you, always have something with you that will help you document when you get that download from God, when you hear what He wants to say. So be willing to listen to know. Secondly, in true rhyme four, form, gather the info. Okay, so this is a new piece that I added to this. I've been teaching on this for a while, but, but I've, I've, I realized something was missing. Um, you always need to gather as much information about the subject that you're going to write about. So say I woke up at 3.30 in the morning or in my quiet time or riding down the road, God gives me this melody and it's built around His sovereignty. 
Well, then what I can do before I ever begin to write is I can gather information about the sovereignty of God. I can, I can ask questions. What does it mean to be sovereign? What is the definition of sovereign? What are synonyms that go along with the word sovereign? And then I could, di- I could dive a little deeper into it and ask, what does the Bible say about God's sovereignty? And then I can ask the question, when have I seen God be sovereign in my life? And the more of those questions I can answer, if God is sovereign, then how does He show His sovereignty? Um, why at times does it feel like God's not sovereign? When you answer those questions, you actually are beginning to create lines that potentially could be either verse or chorus lines. There are some other key tips that I can give you, and they will be in a, a little bit of what you can click on to to see, and it's about a web or a net that you want to look at doing, and it helps you gather information as a writer. Also, there's a census thing that's a, is pretty good uh, little exercise as well. So you've listened to know, you've gathered the info. Now what you're going to do is you're going to write to flow. Um, I think great songs have great structure, but they are typically very prophetic in nature if they're worship songs written by believers. So I think there are two very foundational things to having a great song. And uh, one is you need great structure, but you also need to have heard from God. And so I I heard someone say it this way. If a song is just simply prophetic but doesn't have great structure, then it's like swamp water. It has no boundaries. If a song is nothing but structure, it's like dammed up water. It's not flowing either. Both are still bodies of water. Both are stagnant. A great song that has both structure and the prophetic is like a river. A river has banks. It has borders that keeps the water uh, uh, accountable and keeps it flowing. We need to be writing songs with both great structure and the prophetic because those are songs that are dipped in the river. Um, I would also say the more you know about uh, what good songwriting structure is, you'll be able to write great songs with great structure. Uh, remember this, and this is a key tip. Most of the world is left brain. That means that they're structural thinkers, 90% of the world. Most people that write songs are right brain. That means they're creative thinkers. They love to paint outside of the box. They love to have creative liberty. But if you're going to write songs that the rest of the world can sing, the 90%, you need to consider them when you're writing and make sure that you keep songs uh, in a place where they have good structure, they stay contained inside what people can uh, adhere to or uh, buy into. So great structure is important. Writing to flow is crucial. Now, once you've listened and you know what God wants you to write, and and once you've gathered the info, and then as you've written to flow, then you end up with a song. Um, And most of the time, if I've done a good job with listening to know and gathering the info, when I sit down, and and I love to co-write. So typically in that write to flow moment, I'm with some other writers. So when I'm writing with them and we have all of the information, I'm hoping that we can get the body of a song within two to three to four hours. Sometimes even quicker if we, if we hit like just this, this special place where we're all kind of flowing in the same way. Um, I, I would encourage you, like I challenge young writers, make sure that you try to get as much of that song finished in the right to flow uh, period of time that you're spending with other writers. Try not to lift your pen from paper if you're using a pad and pen, which I know most of us use iPads or computers, but try to at least get a verse and a chorus to get the, the main body of the song in that, in that period of time. Even if some of the lines that you write, you know you won't keep later. I've learned that it's so much easier to, re- to replace even nonsensical lines um, it, just because at least, at least it gives me inspiration to, to, to replace it and fill in the blanks of what needs to be fixed. Um, because in the next part of what I'm going to say, that's where you really hone in and make sure that your lyric is everything it needs to be. And that's when you are editing. So if you've listened to know, you're, you've gathered the info and you've written a flow, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to edit slow. There's an old publishing saying that says, a song is complete when there's nothing left to take away, not when there's nothing more to add. So often when we write a song, we have too much content. We, we, that, that's, that's probably a, just simply because when we're writing, we want to keep adding. But, but I have found as a writer that if I'll start pulling things out of that song and I'll create some space, that song can breathe a little better. Now, here's the thing. If, 
I know people get nervous at times to say, well, if I change it, can I go back to what it was before if what we had in the beginning was best? Sure. But don't be afraid to continue editing. And, 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 and I think most of the times is we're willing to look and say, is that line really saying it the best way it can say it? The more we look and the more we search for the best way to say it, we're probably going to be able to better that line. Um, and, and let me say this. I, so I use this to hold me accountable. Uh, when I'm writing. So one of the things that I feel like I have to do so often is um, I will get into the middle of a song and once you're in the song and the writing process, you're so far inside it that it's hard for you to be objective. At that point, it's really good to take your song to a friend, someone that you trust so that they can listen and give you feedback on the song. So I would encourage you to consider making sure that that you're uh, First of all, that you don't hold the song too tightly at this point when you're in in that editing uh, period of time, that you're willing to hold it lightly and that you're willing to hold it open with open hands so that you can let other people hear it and give their opinion on it. I would also say this. When I'm in that editing phase, I try to make sure if if I know that what we have is a great melody. Now, melody is is it's the way that the notes move, but it's also tempo and it's also Um, syllable count. So when you find a really strong melody to a song, remember most of the time when you walk away from a weekend experience at a church and you've listened to a song that may be a new song, you remember the melody first, maybe just a few words, but, but a great melody, it just stays in your head. So let me say this, when you're editing your song, try not to mess with your melody. Try to make your melody the thing that holds everything else accountable. So I look at it this way. If I know that I've got a great song form in the right to flow section, then as I'm editing, I am going to force my lyric to fit within the melody so that I retain the strength and the structure of the song. Okay? So, so I would say, basically, I line it up this way. Melody holds lyric accountable. Lyric holds rhyme accountable. So... I love to rhyme. I've always loved internal rhymes. Matter of fact, I am very guilty of writing songs that are too rhymy, okay? Having written for such a long time, I look back on some songs I've written and I've thought, man, I wish I would have just said what needed to be said more than trying to find such a cool rhyme. And so I would say this to you. Make sure that your lyric says what it needs to say, even if your rhyme isn't perfect. Because The goal really is to put words in the mouths of the people that declare what they need to be declaring. So melody holds lyric accountable. Lyric holds rhyme accountable. Okay, so in the editing process, and and I would say to you, make sure there's another little statement, and I, I love this. It says, write hastily, edit leisurely. That means that sometimes editing takes a little while. But then you have to be willing at some point, and I think this is so crucial. I've met so many writers through the years that they they started a song 10 years ago. They've written 10 forms of the song, and they're still hanging on to that song. There has to be a a moment where you tie it in a bow and let it go, okay? And, And that's when you're willing to say, okay, here's the song. I'm finished. I've learned that sometimes God gives me a song just for me. There are times when it's not meant for the masses. There are times when he just is, has given me a song and it's just between he and I. And sometimes that song was given to me just so I could get to the next song. And that song might be the song that God gives me for the masses. So don't hold too tightly to your songs. Be willing to let them go. So the five points are this. First, first listen to know. Secondly, gathering the info. Gather the info of what you're going to write about. Thirdly, write to flow. Write it to flow. Fourthly, edit it slow. And then fifthly, tie it in a bow and let it go. Uh, I hope this helps you as, as you continue to write songs. I believe God wants to give us now songs for a now generation, but also now songs for the next generation. And so I would love to pray for you. Uh, and pray that God would just open the the windows of heaven and pour out new creative and fresh ideas uh, for you as a writer. Lord, right now I pray for my friends that are watching, and I pray that you would, Lord, that you would guide their hands, guide their minds, Lord, as they 
put pen to paper. And Lord, I pray as well that you would just open up their ears to hear new and fresh melodies that have never been sung before. And God, I pray your anointing over my fellow writers. And God, I pray that there would be new collaborations. Lord, I pray that for those that are looking for someone to co-write with God, that they would find a new friend, uh, a new writer that would be able to strengthen the areas where they're not as strong. And God, I pray that it would be iron sharpening iron. And I pray that you would give new songs to this now generation of songwriters. And God, I pray that you would just give words that would be the perfect words that you want put into the mouths of the children so that they can declare back to you what you want declared. I pray, pray that in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you.